my wife and I are foster parents, and we have a lot of kids come through our home. And we see the different levels uh, of education coming from different schools around the county. And for the most part, it's real good. But there are some inadequacies. I think there's a, there's a big us versus them when it's between the principals and the district office. There needs to be a, a better line of communications in between the, the principals, the assistant principals, the teachers, and the district office. Uh, the schools start business at 6 a.m. in the morning. The principals arrive at the school at 6 or before, depending on the principal. But the district office doesn't open until 8. And a lot of times if something were to happen, a bus accident, uh, a student incident, and it needed someone at the district office, sometimes it can be hard to get a hold of someone. I'm not saying that the office needs to open at 6 a.m., but mm -hmm. there needs to be more communications between the two. Um, there definitely needs to be more communications in between the principals and the superintendent. I think we're doing real good on keeping ahead of the curve as far as students. Um, sometimes I think we're a little bit too far ahead of the curve though. What we need to do is we need to, we need to have the building plans and the money ready that it may not necessarily be the time to build a school. And those are numbers that you know, as an individual I haven't seen, so it's, it's hard to say what they're what the board and the superintendent are doing as far as how they determine when a school should be built. I would say the south side of Conway, down towards Bucksport. I know that the, the district is currently busing some students from down in the Bucksport area uh, to Carolina Forest. Uh, so that tells you that Conway is obviously at, at maximum load. A kid getting on a bus at 5 o'clock in the morning, that's, that's a long bus ride. And some kids are on the bus between 5 and 5.30. Obviously, we have to get their education. So if we have to take a student from one area to another to get into a high school, then it has to be done. But it does show us a need we are not meeting in the area that that child lives in. If there is a, a high number of students being bused from Lawrence to Carolina Forest, then that tells us that, that we need to look at the Lawrence community and possibly either build another high school or expand. So if you've got a student that needs a certain class or is you know, excelling in a certain class but is not offered at his school, then certainly get him or her to another school where they can you know, get the best education possible. Only on legal issues, um, employee issues, and student appeals. In my five years on the airport committee, we've had one executive session that I can remember. And nothing was decided, decided in that executive session. I am against executive sessions unless it is a legal issue. The SROs are very important in our schools, and I think they should have the tools needed to do the job that they need to do. Uh, in October of last year, I was invited to a government weapons and technology show in D.C., and at that show, there was a facial recognition software that would attach or could be, you know, tied in to a uh, video system, and what that did was is it scanned every face in the crowd, and it would tell you if the person was happy, sad, aggressive, mad. It would give you an emotion level on the screen, and that's one thing that, that I think that we should look at. The technology was very inexpensive. In fact, I think it was around uh, $1,300 for the software program, which is extremely reasonable. But, Things like that, we need to learn to think outside of the box and look outside of the area. We've got to look at every item in the budget and justify it. If it's not justifiable, we don't need to do it. If we have to make cuts, then we're going to have to make cuts. Nobody
everybody likes to, uh, to lose a job, and I would hate to be the person telling them they had to lose a job, but we have to make sacrifices. We cannot continue to grow whenever our money is not growing. We're going to have to look at everything down to pencils and paper. We're going to have to look at salaries of people. I know right now uh, there's a lot of question about salaries of certain people and their positions and how important their positions are. I think we've got some people that are overpaid. We've got some people in the administration that their salaries are a little bloated. 